Now let's uh, look at this case, adiabatic reversible expansion of an ideal gas. Let's see what uh, that's all about. Go back here, what are we talking about? So now what we're doing is infinitesimally moving this piston up. So it's going to be a reversible expansion. So at all times, the internal pressure of the gas here is equal to the external pressure. So if that's the case, well, let's start with the first law, analyze it thermodynamically with the first law. DU is dQ plus dW. We're going to make this adiabatic so that dU is just equal to dW, the change, infinitesimal change in work. We're saying the Q is zero. That's our assumption, adiabatic. Now we're going to make the assumption that we have an ideal. Well, actually, let's first make this assumption, PDV. This means that we have only PV work. And let's make the assumption now that <clears throat> we have an ideal gas. So PV equals NRT. So this would just be equal to NRT over V. That's what pressure is for an ideal gas times dV. And this, we're making the assumption we have an ideal gas. So we can substitute in what P is minus or NRT over V. We also know that, again, for the adiabatic expansion of a gas, we'll have a temperature change. So we can also calculate the change in internal energy as CV dT. There'll be a temperature change and the heat capacity at constant volume times that temperature change will give you the change in internal energy. All right, so let's equate these two expressions for du. So I have CV dt is minus nRT over V dV. Let's integrate this. This is a temperature, so I'll bring that over there. So this would be CV dt over T. That's equal to minus nR dV over V. Now we have the variables on the right side of the equation and left side of the equation. So let's integrate both sides. This will go from T1 to T2. And this will go to the corresponding V1 volume to V2, second volume. Let's make the assumption that CV is a constant. So integral of dt over t from T1 to T2. And let's furthermore make the assumption that <clears throat> the number of moles is constant. So this is minus nR times the integral of from V1 to V2 of dV over V. Again, we're saying it's constant CV. CV does not depend on temperature. You can pull it out of the integral and constant number of moles n. So you can pull that out and R is a constant. We can pull that out. So with that, the integral of 1 over t will be natural log of t evaluated with these between these two in, inter, integration limits. So ZV, <coughs> sorry, natural log of t2 final minus t1 initial is equal to minus nr times the uh, natural log of the final volume over the initial volume, V1. Let's further, we already assumed we have a ideal gas. So that we have, we can say that, um, remember f from the last lecture, the relationship between heat capacity, CP, is equal to CV plus NR. So that NR is equal to the heat capacity constant pressure minus heat capacity constant volume. Let's substitute that in there. So now we have heat capacity CV, ln of T2 over T1. That's equal to minus CP minus CV, natural log of V2 over V1. Let's pull this CV underneath here. So this is a natural log of T2 over T1. That's equal to minus CP minus CV over CV natural log of V2 over V1. And that's equal to, let's see, divide this thing here. So it's minus CP over CV minus 1. Oh yeah, that's right. A natural log of V2 over V1. And now let's uh, use a different symbol here. I'll just rewrite this equation up here. <clears throat> so we have natural log of T2 over T1. Let's take a minus. Let's use the symbol gamma for the ratio of heat capacities. 
All right, so CP over CV, we'll use the symbol gamma. Why are we using gamma? Well, that's what uh, everybody else uses. Now look what I've done. Let me sort of erase that. Okay, good. So people use the symbol gamma. We'll define this to be equal to gamma. So this would be gamma minus 1 ln of V2 over V1. And this will just be equal to, uh, remember, A times the natural log of x is equal to the natural log of x raised to the a power. So this is equal to minus ln. Oh, actually, let's get rid of that minus sign. Let's pull the minus in here. So this will be 1 minus gamma v2 over v1. That quantity is raised to 1 minus gamma. Oh, look, natural log of this, natural log of this. So you can take the anti-log of both sides to give you t2 over t1. Then we get a v2 over v1 raised to the 1 minus gamma power. And remember, x to the a, a plus b is equal to x to the a times x to the b. So we can write this as v2 over v1 uh, times, <clears throat> sorry, what am I doing here? <clears throat> no, I don't want a ballpoint pen. Felt to pen raised to the first power times v2 over v1 raised to the gamma power. Now, we have an ideal gas so that <clears throat> t2 over t1, final temperature minus initial temperature at constant number of moles, we made that assumption already, it's just p2 v2 over p1 v1 for an ideal gas. So plug this expression in there and we have p2 v2 over p1 v1. That's equal to v2 over v1. Oh, look, that's going to cancel out. Uh, v2 over v1 raised to the gamma. Remember, gamma is defined as the ratio of heat capacity, Cp or Cv. Uh, that cancels out, so we have p2 over p1 is equal to V2 over V1, the whole thing raised to the gamma. Apparently I made a slight mistake here. 1 minus gamma, so this should be a minus here. And so that's a minus gamma there. And it should be a minus gamma. And minus, you can just flip this around to make this V1 over V2 raised to the gamma power. So finally, if you cross multiply this, we have P1 V1 raised to the gamma is equal to P2 V2 raised to the gamma. There's a bottom line there. So this, for an uh, adiabatic reversible expansion of an ideal gas, this is the relation that the pressure and volume initially and pressure volume finally, that PV product has to the restraints on those pressures and volumes. All right, that's interesting. Uh, note that for an ideal gas, isothermal, isothermal expansion of ideal gas, P1V1 equals P2V2. But for an adiabatic reversible expansion of ideal gas, P1V1 raised to the ratio of heat capacities is equal to P2V2 raised to the ratio of heat capacities. I think I hope I convinced you of that down here. That's for an adiabatic reversible expansion of an ideal gas. And of course, the whole th the, all the arguments apply for a, a contraction of a gas too. Here we're just using expansion because, I guess, for historical reasons. All right, that's the end of this section of lecture four.